Now here's another example involving a hydraulic lift. And in this particular case, the cylinder over here on the left is pushed down and you can see it fits into the, the the piston fits into the sleeve there into the cylinder and the fluid is in here under the cylinder and it's also running all through this line and when you push down on this cylinder the fluid runs the fluid is pushed there's a gr increase in pressure and the fluid can flow through these lines it can branch out and it can go to all four of these other cylinders So it flows like that, and then these cylinders underneath the pistons here, in all of them, it's full of fluid. So when you increase the pressure on the left side, because the pressure is transmitted equally to all parts of the fluid, the pressure increases on the right side. And there are four of them over here. So there's a very large increase in the area, and that's going to result in a very large increase in the upward force. And we'll do the calculation. The math is pretty simple whatever amount the area gets multiplied by the force also gets multiplied by so suppose we have a downward force here of 125 pounds and just to keep the math simple we'll imagine this downward force acts on one square inch so 125 pounds on one square inch so you can see what the pressure is going to be it's going to be 125 pounds per square inch and when you exert this force down you cause that much pressure to exist everywhere through the hydraulic system so there's 125 pounds per square inch on all four of these cylinders over here and that force is pushing those up now on the right let's suppose that each of these has an area of one square foot now one square foot you might remember is a hundred and forty four square inches because one square foot is twelve inches by twelve inches a total of a hundred and forty four square inches and there's four of those so over on the right side the cylinders being lifted up the total area is a hundred and forty four square inches times four which works out to five hundred and seventy six square inches as opposed to one square inch on the other side. So the area is multiplied by a factor of 576. That means the force generated upward is going to be 576 times as strong as the force that we put in. So the total force is going to be 576 times 125 pounds. There's another way to see that same calculation. You can think of a total area on all four of these cylinders is 576 square inches times the pressure of 125 pounds per square inch. That's the pressure. And when you set it up that way, you can see the square inches mathematically cancels out, leaving you with a force in pounds. And 576 times 125 comes out to 72,000 pounds, which seems like a very large force, and it is. That's equivalent to 36 tons. So a person just standing over here, 125 pounds, that might be the weight of a typical person pushing down, can result in an upward force of 36 tons being lifted. Now the trade-off again deals with force and distance. If you multiply the force by a factor of 100 and not 125, excuse me, by a factor of 576, then the distance is on, is going to be divided by 576. So whatever distance gets pushed down over here, you're only going to get an upward distance of 1 576th of that. Now, lifts like this in the real world don't simply have um, an input cylinder that someone would mash or, or push on over here like this. There would be a pump mechanism, and the pump would continue to pump in more and more fluid to get as much upward distance on the lift as you needed. But the pump wouldn't need to exert a tremendous amount of pressure. 125 pounds per square inch, for example, would be enough to generate this hu huge outward force. But it can, could continue to pump more and more fluid into the system to get as much upward distance as was needed. So hydraulic lifts like this tend to move rather slowly, but they move with tremendous force.